Hello again, Fight Fans. I am Jason Burgos for SureDog.com, and I have the pleasure of being joined by a man many are pointing to as one of the future elite talents of the UFC featherweight division. On January 18th at UFC 246, he will return to the cage to face off with a true hard-boiled veteran of the division in Andre Feely, and that man is the one they call Super. He is Sadiq Yusuf. Sadiq, thanks for joining me in the lead-up to this upcoming fight, man. No problem, man. It's my pleasure. Now, you, of course, have... Uh, excuse me, the questions. You, of course, have a pivotal fight coming up. But before that, I want to go back to the Gabriel Benitez fight. Early on in that first and, and only round, you pushed the pressure really hard. It almost seemed like you, you did not have much respect for his striking or the power he might have in his hands. However, midway through, he, midway through, he caught you with a shot that stumbled you a little bit. He built some momentum off it. Going into that fight, do you feel you maybe underestimated his striking in some way? Or was that heavy pressure just the plan and you felt you could overwhelm yeah, yeah. him with it yeah tell me no, I, I i never underestimated him at all you know the plan was to go into that fight and try to put on a show you know i told mm -hmm. my coaches prior to it i was like hey th this one we're gonna take a couple of risks you know because, because it was a very high profile card and i knew if i could make a name for myself in that card i'll kind of be in the position that i am now so it was kind of a a, a risk that i thought i thought was worth it you know is that a part, like, part of the development in terms of, like, brand recognition and just fight development? Let me take a little yeah. risk, go out there and see how it happens? 100%, 100%. And based off, like, the opponents, you know, there's some people that you can't make, take those risks against. But based off the opponent, you know, it's, it's kind of worth it. Because especially in this sport, it's a little bit hard to stand out, you know? And yeah. I think I've done, <laughs> done a pretty good job of yeah. um, putting my name out there a little bit. But those are kind of cho choices you're going to have to make sooner or later. And speaking of development, in the last minute of the fight, you land a big shot that floors him. Let's see the eventual finish. Obviously, the fight was a long, drawn-out war, but you did get some solid resistance and a bit of a scare there. How much of a learning experience was that for you in terms of getting that resistance and someone really putting up a fight and make you have to maybe adjust on some level? Yeah, yeah. Nah, it's cool, man. Like um, like I said, Gabriel's another guy. He's I don't think he has as many fights as Philly, but he's been mm -hmm. in the U.S. for a long time, too. You know, I think. I think it was like 20 and 7 or something like that. I don't remember what his record was, but he he's had a lot of UFC fights too. So being able to make some with someone that's had a lot more experience than me, that was, that was a cool thing to do. But each each fight is different, you know? Like every time you start get into a new one, it brings a whole new table. And you never, we all try to act like we know what's going to happen, but <laughs> we don't know what's going to happen until the actual fight takes place. Right. Andre Feely has been a part of this division for over five years. He's fought a who's who's of it, including a Calvin Cater, Yair Rodriguez, Max Holloway. This fight feels like a natural progression in your career and getting a well-respected name in the division now. In this the level of fighter you in this level of fighter, do you feel a win over him finally gets you that top fifteen ranking consideration? Yes, one hundred percent. Um it might get me even closer than top 15, you know. It could definitely get me a top 10 opponent, you know, yeah. because, like you said, Philly's been in there for a long time, and he's kind of held the same kind of position in the UFC for a long time. Yeah. So I feel like beating him kind of puts me on the other side as the other guys, you know. So after this one, I'm definitely going to be looking to get a top 10 opponent. When that that fight is offered to you and your management team, is there like a yes, all right, this is exciting a fight I'm looking forward to? Is there even some nerves like, all right, I'm getting a tough fight? Is a little scared? Like, uh, what's the thought that happens when that happens? Uh, it's there's not really much. Um, a lot of times, my coach just calls me. He's like, "Hey, this is next," and I'm like, "Okay, that's really <laughs> how, that's really how it goes, isn't it?" I haven't gotten to the point yet where I've been able to. Um, say, yeah, I want this guy over this guy or this guy over this guy. I feel like after this fight, it'll probably start making sense for me to um start looking based off like matchup wise. Mm -hmm. But at this point, my coaches kind of just tell me like, hey, this guy's next. I'm sure he goes over it and talks with my manager and stuff True. like that. But I, I'm just a uh, um. I'm just the avatar that they use. <laughs> now, fair enough. Now, those guys I mentioned that Philly Ford, uh, Philly lost to, but he does have some good wins, too. He's got a win over Dennis Bermudez, Hakran Diaz, and two men you also beat in Shaman Morais and, and, and Gabriel Benitez, like we talked about, and he actually beat them faster than you. When scouting him for this fight, what makes him a dangerous opponent in your view for you and your skill sets? And, and is he a guy that really seems to be kind of coming into his own? And he's, the dude's only 29, which is nuts to me. 
Yeah, yeah, he is. I know it's it's, it's strange that he's only twenty nine because <laughs> I, I remember um watch I've been watching him in the UFC mm-hmm. for a long time. You know, before I was ever a fighter, I was yeah. a fan first. You know, so it's it is strange that he's not that old, but um, <laughs> he has dangerous tools. You know, and both um Benitez and Shaman fight. He caught him both with a right head kick. You know, mm-hmm. and then like the punches is kind of just um extra at the end. But his big weapons are those kicks, and he keeps a good range very well. And as long as I'm patient and I work, work and work smart, it should be a good night for me. And it's not often nowadays in the UFC that you can fight a guy that's still that young but has fought so many fights in so many various styles. You know, mentioned on the, all those various fighters he uh, he's already fought in the UFC. What do you feel you bring to the table that maybe Andre Feely maybe hasn't seen, you know, and should be very worried about on the 18? I'm not gonna make anything up. I don't think I'm bringing. <laughs> like, like you said, he has. Um, he's been there for a long time, and most of the things that I'm gonna bring, he's gonna, he's seen it before. And at the end of the day, my coaches always say, "Is is one thing to to know what someone's gonna do. It's a whole other thing to stop them from doing it." Mm. When, when, as you've gone through your development, over, in, you know, making your way to UFC and growing as a fighter, have you like is something you've learned is it is strategy really important is it purely execution are you because you just mentioned like you know you're not going to show him maybe something he hasn't seen he's fought so many good fighters in so many different styles is it just if as long as you execute and you you know you do those right things it's it can overcome skills certain skills and 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 attributes at this type of a level it's more about execution at the highest level uh, give and take, give and take. I'm a, I'm a hundred percent execution guy. You know, there's a lot of, there's, you got to show up game day. As, yeah. as long as you show up on game day, that's all that really matters. Especially in this sport where wins and losses is kind of, um, your streak is what gets you further in the business. Yeah. But there's also going to be a big part of strategy too. You know, when I was coming up, my, um, favorite fighter was George St. Pierre, you know, mm-hmm. and he got a lot of his wins by switching it up on different opponents. Yep. So. Like there's not you can't I can't go too deep into like game plans for the fights, but there's a, there's always definitely a strategy there. Is Feely by far with his twenty and six record by far the best guy you fought in your career? Uh, I'll say so. Yeah, yeah. Because um, before that, it will have to be Benitez or Shaman. So and he's beating them, so he'll be the top guy. Is it because of experience that he he's a he's the hardest so most interesting opponent for you, or is there certain aspects of his style that you maybe haven't seen and you you are a little worried about? No, no, no. I don't, I don't, I don't think he's the best based off like um like skills or something like that, you know, because different matchups gives different challenges, right. you know, um, I, I, but experience wise, definitely. A uh, story mentioned throughout the year and also something, you know, I, I talked about on the podcast I used to do with Sherdo was kind of the ascension of Nigerian fighters in the UFC and just MMA from, from Africa in general. How meaningful is it to be a part of something like that? Because uh, a similar movement isn't happening in other sports like, you know, basketball, hockey, you know, some, you know, you're yeah, part yeah. of something special going on right now in MMA. Yeah, it's pretty cool, you know. Like I said, rising tide raises all ships, you know. So mm-hmm. the, we're gonna pop up one at a time, and then sooner or later, the whole sport's gonna be covered with us. So it's pretty cool to be one of the guys on the forefront. At the end of 2019, you and your family became U.S. citizens. I saw. Talk to me about why That's that is so important and meaningful for you, and, and just because you're an example of the American dream and and, and coming exactly. over here, bettering your life and your family's life. Talk to me about that. Exactly. It's a super big deal for us because not only does it help us out, but it opens it opens up some avenues for us to help like the rest of my relatives back home, you know, because now I can start filing to help bring them over slow, slowly but surely. And we've, we've been here for a long time, man, especially my mom. She's been here for a long time. And if any of you know the, the immigrant struggle, it's, it's hard to provide a living when you're not really supposed to be here, you know, so you got to grind it out the mud. But, you know, it's... Everything happens for a reason. It's a long process, and we can't complain. We're in a good place now. From here on, they're just climbing that ladder. What is your opinion, kind of, on what's going on in the the political, cultural climate here in the U.S.? You know, there is like this unfortunate anti-immigrant stance from certain people. Government. I mean, is is there ever idea that you take your platform and and use it to speak out, or is that? too much of a hot topic maybe you'll stay yeah, away from it. yeah it's, it's it's too touchy man you know a lot of people are very passionate about that and you know it's like it's something that directly affects me and like a lot of my close friends so it's not it's not really something that i want to touch on 
Now, I, I read that you were into superheroes as a kid. I, too, loved them as a kid. But as you can maybe see, I am still very much into them as a grown-ass adult. The question is, is Super Sadiq still a fan of superheroes now? Uh -huh. the, the funny thing, that's a very common misconception. Mm. The Super Sadiq doesn't, um, is not from Superman. Mm. The Super Sadiq Yusuf is from Dragon Ball Z. It's Super oh. Sadiq. Yeah, so, so the SSY is like a, is a Super Saiyan thing. That's where Super Sadiq Yusuf is from. It's not from Superman. Are you then, are you an uh, avid Dragon Ball Z fan? Do you have the video game? Do you watch all I, the I, anime? I, I'm an avid anime fan. I like every single type of anime, mostly shonen genre, but that's that's been on me since I was little. What did you think of the 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 Dragon Ball Z movie came out that was just terrible, like bad reviews and a bunch of white folks? Like, were you what did you think oh, of that movie? Oh, the, the live action. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't know what the heck that was. I didn't <laughs> make that movie and named it something else. Like, yeah. it honestly had like little to nothing to do with the actual <laughs> with the actual. <laughs> Now, you have become a guy in the division that a lot of people are looking at as a possible future contender, sort of like how people looked at, say, Brian Ortega in 2017, Zabit Magomed Sharipov in 2018. Have you felt a change over the last year or so? Does there seem to be, like, a higher level of recognition from the media, from fans, maybe an expectation level and, 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 and interest from media types like myself more now? Yeah, yeah, and with each fight, it gets stronger and stronger. You know, there's still a lot of doubters too, but like I said, you can't if you you don't know what you don't know. So at the end of the day, you can't that that type of recognition is not really something that surprised me. Like you don't want to be the last person to become a fan of yourself. Yeah, your, your number one fan should always be you, and then you just gotta wait for everybody else to get on board. Now, I, I talked to O'Day Osborne, who's fighting on the same car as you, and he talked about, you know, when he won the Contender Series, he, he knew that moment was coming. It was normal to him and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, since you, 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 I'm sure all of you guys have a visualization, you're going to go there, but do you visualize this stuff, the media stuff, the media day, the responsibilities? <laughs> like, is that easy to transition yeah. to? Were, were you looking forward to that? This is all kind of weird. Not, when, I was, when I was a kid, I used to have dreams about um, – being in the UFC, but not even just necessarily like being in a fight. I would have dreams about walking around in a hotel lobby before, um, <laughs> before, 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 before the fights and stuff like that. Yeah. So all of this stuff is like, as it's happening, it's kind of like, oh, there goes that thing that you thought about. There goes that thing that you thought about, you know? So all this comes with the program. Like I said, it's been my dream since I was little. So these little stuff, like there's some people that get they get to that highest level, and maybe I'll understand when I get there. But you know, you hear a lot of complaints about, oh, I gotta do this, 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 and this, and this. But like I said, it's been my dream. All that that comes with it was also part of my dream too. Are you having to, you know, with the help of your management team, are you getting a lot of offers from all these various places, and you kind of have to figure out what are the worthwhile ones and and not? Is that, and is that kind of like nerve wracking because you don't want to make bad choices? It could always set you back. Yeah, one hundred percent. It's not. It's not even nerve wracking. Sometimes too, it's like um time management. You know, mm. like it, it's it's it sucks. Um, like turning stuff down or turning people down. But you don't want to get too deep into um having your hands in too many places to where you can't focus. It, it, I mean, from I'm sure from you know many kids when they're seeing their favorite stars and athletes and on the TV and they visualize being that. They want to be in the commercials. They want to have the the shoe deal, the, the the clothing deal. Is that something? A super clothing line sneaker deal eventually down the line as things get better. One hundred percent. We're trying we're trying to change our lives out here. You mm -hmm. know, it's like we're not just doing this for fun. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of people's lives that I could change if I if everything goes according to plan. So it's just one step at a time, one fight at a time. And the better I do, the better it is for me and my people.